Hey, low key, the video might be my new trading bait. Yeah, we got busy with her three times. Maybe a fourth one coming soon. Let's get it. This man, it's your boy Wall Street Shooter, and I'm checking in for the gang, and it is August 4th. Yeah, we at August, man. We at August, y'all. Hopefully, your July profits were green bean. Hopefully, you learned some new strategies. You executed them strategies, and you applied those strategies and was able to make a profit last month. But it's a new month, y'all. That means it's new goals, new p &L goals new new strategies new opportunities new plays and it look like the market's trying to change a little bit the market's trying to go from that old bear run they trying to go ahead and get crispy on a bull run what do y'all think anyways man before we get into this trade recap that i hit on the video yeah like i said the video might be the new trading bet y'all know i love spy you know that's bae she paid very well but the video's been blessing the kid and so today i hit them for a tree them i hit her for tree 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 trades three for three all green beans man and i want to break it down to y'all but before we get into that if you're a new subscriber thank you i appreciate you i appreciate you pulling up hitting that subscribe button it means a lot you know i'm kind of new to this whole youtube thing so i'm very very appreciative even if i was old school i'm still appreciative of all the new all the o's all the og earners club only gang members shout out to y'all for always running the videos up i see you and if you are not subscribed please do so like the video share it if you if you think i'm kicking some good information and then most importantly hit the notification button stay tapped in i do post i've been posting more reels um those 60 second clips in the trading review trading recaps from there so I decided that I want to go ahead and, you know, bless y'all with a nice little lengthy video. But it's not going to be too long. We're going to get right into it. All right. Enough of me, man. Let's talk about the video and how I scored three times. <laughs> okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, for those who don't know, I use Thinkorswim. For all you newcomers, I'm using Thinkorswim. Broker Rich. I love Thinkorswim. I used, I came from the the Weibo app um, and then switched over once I got more a little, little bit more icy. You know, when you get icy, man, you got to upgrade your software, upgrade your platform. But I'm not saying anything wrong with Weibo, Robinhood, and like that. I prefer Thinkorswim. Anyway, let's talk about NVIDIA, man. We're looking on the five-minute chart, five-minute timeline. And like I said, we hit it for three times. So I'm going to break down each trade. First, most importantly, if you've been watching my reels on IG, if you're watching my YouTube, pre-market levels are so important. It is vital for you to wake up at least 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how many trades you're looking at. Look at the pre-market levels. That data is very vital, especially if you did some charting the night before, right? If you didn't do charting the night before, you should definitely be waking up at least 30 to 45 minutes looking over the trades that you have an interest in getting into and you see what those pre-market levels pre-market these last couple of weeks i've been using the pre-market breakout strategy or opening range strategy and it's been icy now i'm not saying it works all the time but it's very good to know what those levels look like so let me break down a pre-market level right so on the video i break my uh, pre black or high and i usually check it from 4 a.m to 4 45 a.m um as far as my pre-market data goes uh, this particular high is 189.65 was yesterday's high. As you can see, we tested this in the pre-market and it held. Uh, my low was 188.35, which is my support. So I have my pre-market 185.65, 188.35. The key thing is that my high was the previous day high. Okay. So trade number one. Train one one pretty simple. Um, I look for an opening range hold. So the video flushed hit about 187.62. As you can see here on the first candle, first five minute candle, 180 182.62. I marked that as my low of day, right? I set that the next candle, which broke through pre-market high. Now I did not jump into this trade due to the amount of volume that came off this candle. I was flipping between the two minute and the five minute charts. I didn't like it. And you know, I like breaks out retests before I jump into anything. 
the key thing about this candle is that it hit 187.62 and held. The next candle, this big motherfucker right here, also hit 187.62 and did not break. As you can see, none of these candles cl closed below 187.62. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I did not wait for it to break through 188.35, which was a support turn to resistance. And I sure didn't wait to 189.65. I figured that AMD was going to get a lot of push because they had good earnings. Even though their price action was crap after they reported good earnings, semiconductor space i felt confident enough to jump into this play and i went full size as soon as this candle hit and you can see there's barely a wick on it barely a wick as soon as it hit 187.62 i dove deep <laughs> and did it pay off paid off big and we had a freaking explosion Look at this candle, 187. I mean, when I watch this, it's a scalper's dream, man. This is a scalper's dream. And I easily took a nice 20% uh, 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 cut and trimmed. I left a runner. We pulled back to the nine, held VWAP beautifully. I mean, textbook, breakthrough, retest. Breakthrough, retest strategy. The key thing is that we created this day of high of one, one, uh, 190 79. We pulled back to the nine and the Viva app held, shot right through it again. My runner ran up and I got another about five or eight percent when we hit 192.39. That was trade number one. Beautiful opening range with mixed with a little bit of pre-market and just being patient. I think that's the most important thing is being patient, patient, doing your homework the night before, understanding where your levels and your bounce zones are. And it bounced beautifully off this 187. So that was the first trade. What I did next, kind of same, same, same uh, techniques. Once we hit 192, just based off of all this price action, all this volume being pushed, the market started to change. I noticed that on the NASDAQ, we started to pull back. I got into puts. As soon as we hit this 192 and I cashed out on that runner, I flip to 190 puts and I rolled this thing all the way down to this pullback where I cut I got a, a nice, uh, another 20, 25%. I cut, left a couple of runners. It pulled back to 190, which was our opening day high. Pulled back to 190, held. Even though that we got above or closed above the, nine, uh, the, 920, the 9 EMA, I was confident with that 190 just due to this structure here. We held. I kept my runners. I added another one, and then we ripped all the way back to where, guys? 187.62 let's go baby so that pit that total put printed about 35 percent on the put play that's trade number two y'all textbook i mean once you once you start catching your vibe man you lock all the way in it's, it's like the matrix y'all ever seen a beautiful mind with the numbers i know y'all seen those those gifts where all the numbers do sit in there and the numbers just i was in the matrix i was locked in on this right I wasn't looking at no other, no other stocks. I was locked in with the video. All right. So trade number three. And this was more so a day trade. No, it wasn't. Excuse me. I'm tripping. This was another scout. So we had this. So I got my 189.65 pre-market high. 188.35 pre-market low. We broke and we started this crab walk. If you've been rocking with me, you know I got my own lingo with this. Crab walking, crab walks sideways, also known as consolidation, right? So we had this crab walking effect going on right now. Really didn't pick, a, didn't, the, the stock market didn't really pick a direction. It was very choppy. I was watching the NASDAQ, um, watching the, what, at AMD. AMD was taking off. So I flipped over and saw AMD was running. Again, they have good earnings. And I'm like, okay, they twin sisters, AMD and NVIDIA. You know what I'm saying? Let me... Look for a trade number three. Even though this consolidation was happening, I was very patient. When we broke this 189.40, before we even broke the 189.65 pre-market high, I was already buying a contract, right? We just bought one contract. Once we broke and this candle here ripped above this 189, I sized back in, right? Sized back in, created a bear, uh, bull flag, we ripped through 190.79. Yeah. 
By the time we got the 190, 190, this uh, 191, 61, I was already out the trade with another 25% banker, man. I can't. <laughs> I mean, it's, and you know, it's just been patience and execution, man, just knowing your levels and being confident, man, and not, not second guessing yourself. Now, what I mentioned earlier, trade number four, I'm in a swing trade. And basically when I got into the swing trade, I checked my hourly, I checked the four hour, I checked the daily, figured that we had a little bit more room, probably into the 196 is where my uh, key resistance, I know we're in heavy structure, I'm gonna show you guys, but I got, I'm gonna show you when I got into this, uh, this swing trade. So once we hit this 191, 61 area we started to pull back to the 189.65 pre-market high held uh, we held i got into a 190 call and a couple of calls and i just been holding since then so right now i'm in the green with the 190 calls i think i'm up about like 15 percent give or take we've been pulling back so you know you lose a little profit when you pull back a little your p your p and l percentage come down when you're pulling back and so I'm roughly about 10, 15% on a swing trade. Um, so hopefully, you know, tomorrow, and it's a uh, expiration of next week. So I'm giving it a little time to breathe. Now, the reason why I got into this, like I was mentioning, uh, there's heavy structure here. We're here at this 193.05 level. As you can see, it's heavy structure here with NVIDIA. A lot of activity in this little area. A lot of activity right here. We're right in the midst of this. So I know this 193 structure um, is heavy, is a heavy psych level or area. Um, so hopefully this the market will push and continue to pump. The NASDAQ, the tech sector has been pushing this market uh, in, a, in an upward direction. Low key, we're in a, in a uh, bull market by a definition. NASDAQ is above 20% from a 20% low. And we're up over 20%. I'll show you guys so you know I'm just not selling wolf tickets. Here we go. Pull up the NASDAQ, show you real quick. So up the nasty NASDAQ. All right, so if I pull out my trend line here, and we got our lows. All right, take our lows. And as y'all can see, we're up 20.69%. So technically in 48 days. So technically... We're in a bull market. We're above this structure. If you've been rocking with me, uh, this key level here, I told you guys, I want to see us get above. We have got above that structure. Um, let me one second. Let me draw. Let me draw this out. We got above this structure. Um, also, want to see us get above this price action here. We have crept above it. I want to see us now pull back and continue to push. Then we're going to start making new higher highs and lower lows. That's what I would like to see. But, uh, yeah, man, we might be on our way, man, on the backs of uh, good earnings uh, from the tech sector, man. They've been holding us down. Shout out to the to the big tech companies, man. Um, even the fintech companies have been holding it down as well, too. Travel, Airbnb has been crushed earnings. Uh, DoorDash crushed earnings. Uh, it's good to see some of these companies, uh, you know, put it on their backs and kind of carrying this out of this uh, bear market, hopefully. We'll see, man. We'll see if this is just not a little, you know, artificial pump. Uh, some keep random stuff to kind of look at. Start looking into this uh, monkeypox vaccine companies. Uh, the United States just declared um, emergency, national emergency, or whatever they call it. So you might start looking into some of those like GOVX. Uh, Siga, uh, just to name a few off the top of my head, just start looking at that, man, because, hey, they're going to get rich of it. Institutional retail, uh, institutional traders, big core, big farm, they about to get rich off of it. We might as well, as retail investors, go ahead and try to get a little crumbs here and there. So start looking at that. I'm not telling you guys to go buy, hold, or sell, or jump into options for any of those monkeypox vac vaccine companies or anything like that. Just go do your due diligence. D, you know, Dior, I always say Dior, D-Y-O-R, do your own research <clears throat> and just figure out if it fits. Um, but we learned from the COVID, you know, Big Farm got rich off of COVID vaccine, man. So, you know, history, history repeats itself, but it kind of beats at a different rhythm. So um, I'm definitely tapped in and looking at some of those, some of the long term option plays on, on those on those particular companies that's trying to come up with the monkeypox vaccination man i gotta get my coin i gotta get my bag too so yeah 
that was my trade on the video, man. We hit him for three times. Hopefully for four, we can get this swing. I got some time on my hands as far as expiration date into next week. Definitely want to see that push above uh, up in that key structure area that I was talking about with NVIDIA. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm glad to be back, man. I haven't uploaded a video. I'm glad y'all still been rocking with me, rocking with the reels and everything. Taking some family time, man. This, If you've never done YouTube before, man, it's a lot, especially when you're editing, putting out content, writing up content, thinking of new content, trying to upload the IG, trying to upload the YouTube, uh, TikTok, stay aboard on Twitter. Then you got a Discord and, you, and you're feeding, feeding out plays and educating your discord community and then you got a corporate job on top of it so and i'm not complaining i'm just letting you guys know man i appreciate y'all for being patient as uh as we you know as i try to get this information out to y'all man and hopefully you're learning something hopefully you like the entertainment factor of this um, i got a lot more stuff that i want to cover i'm definitely going to cover i got some videos in the can that i want to put out for as educational stuff sharing my indicators how i use my indicators um I'm going to do another video on picking a brokerage and and I'm going to do something for TDMA, my setup for TD, uh, TDMA or Thinkorswim software. So anyway, this video has been long enough. I miss you guys. Uh, thank you for pulling up. If you like, if I earned your like, please drop, please do so now. If you want to share it with your friends, your mom, your dad, your baby mama, your baby daddy, your side piece, your wife, whomever, please hit the share button. I truly appreciate that. And then if you want to stay tapped in with the videos here, uh, make sure you hit the notification bell. You can be part of the Earners Club. And then if you want to join the Discord, I do have a Discord. The link is in the bio. You can go down in there and click the link in the bio. It is a paid subscription. I want to be straight up front transparent. It's a paid subscription, but it is four tiers to it. As low as $5.99. Yes, I'm cheaper than your Starbucks coffee with a better return rate. Um, I do not those signals i let you know when i get in and out of place i don't like to do the whole signaling thing because i don't want you guys to be dependent on me right if i decide that i don't want to do this anymore um or broadcast this information on youtube or in the discord i want you guys to be self-efficient to be able to get in and out of trades using the knowledge that i'm providing for you and not just depending on my signals now i like i said i do share when i'm in and out of trades but i don't do signaling I do live watch lists every Sunday uh, where I do Q&A. Um, I go over the stocks that you're thinking about doing and break them down with TA analysis. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a cool place, man. We're a tight-knit group community. Um, just like-minded like people just trying to unlock financial freedom and most important, create generational wealth, not just for us, but our families through the stock market and cryptocurrency. So, yes, I do cryptocurrency as well. I do mining, talk about staking, crypto news, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot of information in regards to just the investing. So if you want to be part of that community, the link is in the bio. No pressure. If you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. Okay. It's your boy, Wall Street Shooter, and this is not financial advice. Peace, y'all.